Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to make a really, really big gift bag in my new series of gift bags. I hope you'll stay tuned. First thing I wanted to say is that I've been really, really loving mixed up crafts, and I think that uh, Sam Calcott is really, really talented, and one of the things she's really great at is making a bunch of different kinds of gift bags. So I'm going to use a lot of hers as in inspirations and this one is no exception. I'm going to tell you first the pieces of paper you need. I got these from a couple of different paper pads and they were all from AC Moore and they're out of business now so I got to be honest I don't think you can get these but they're very spring looking and I'm using two of the same front and back those are each 12 by 12 they look like that both flowers and then for my sides these are 8 by 12 and I'm sorry if there's a glare you'll need two of those my other one is laying there and then you'll need another 8 by 12 and this is for the bottom of our bag let's do a little bit of scoring or a lot of scoring oh I forgot two more things you need You'll need some kind of decoration. I think I'm going to hang something like this on my bag. And then you'll need two of these. These are going to be the, the pieces that will hold the bag together, basically. And these are each six inches long and two inches wide. Let me make sure the six inches. I'm pretty sure I'm right, but that, yeah, six inches long by two inches wide. And you know, I'll go over all of that information will be below the video as it always is, including the directions on how you do this, just in case you wonder. I'm going to do some scoring now. On our two inch side of these, I think she calls these, she calls these hinges, obviously, because they hold the bag together. You're going to score them on the two inch length at one inch on both of your pieces. One inch, both are scored. That's all the scoring on those. Then for our bottom of our bag, I have a little bit of dirt on the bottom of it, so I'm going to put that on the inside of my bag. You're going to put this on the eight inch length, and you're going to score it at one inch, and you're going to score it at seven inches. Oh, jumped out of the track. I wouldn't be doing a video if I wasn't jumping out of the track, would I? Let's try that one more time. Okay. So that's all the scoring on the bottom. Then <clears throat> we're going to score our two sides. The sides are a little bit more complicated, but they're not tricky. You're going to score this again on the one inch and on the seven inch. Then you're going to turn it one turn and then you're going to score it at three inches and then you're going to go up to the top of your bag again. Um, this is the bottom of your bag now. I want to make sure I tell you this. If you have a pattern that goes directionally, this score that we just made that's at three inches, that needs to be the bottom. So the first two scores don't matter, you know, the one and the seven inch. Those can be um, on whichever, you know, top or bottom. But once you get to this score, you need to make sure that your pattern, if you flip it over, your pattern has to face up away from this little score at the bottom. Hopefully that made sense. That way they'll be in the right direction for your bag. Then you're going to put your, your paper back in your scoreboard and you're going to score it at four inches and you're going to only score down to that line in the middle, that score you just made at the three inch mark. And I'll show you a little bit more on that in a minute. We'll do the other one so you're sure you got it. 
Again, one inch. I'm going to turn it around. It'll be easier for me to do it. You could do it at seven inches or you can turn it around. If you only have a small scoreboard and it only goes to six inches, you can turn it around and do it at one inch on either end. Okay, then you're going to turn it this way. So you're on the 12 inch length across the top. And this time you're going to score it at three inches. And then turn it back so that your three inch score is down at the bottom here. Hopefully you can see that. Your three inch score should be down here. Then you're going to score it at four inches. Make sure it's right. Four inches just down to that score that we made. Just down to that three inch mark right there. Then let me take these out because we have two more scores to do, but we won't be able to do those with a normal scoreboard. If you have one of these envelope things that you can put into your scoreboard that you'll be able to turn your paper on a diagonal, you could use that. But I know most people don't have something like that, so I never use mine in videos because I think it just confuses you. Okay. And my scoreboard, a lot of people have asked me about it, is an old Martha Stewart scoreboard that was also a paper trimmer. I recently saw it on Amazon, my exact one. It's Martha Stewart makes it, and again, Amazon is where I saw it. I don't have any affiliation with anybody. I just thought I'd tell you that. I forgot one more thing I need to score. Uh, whichever your of your pages, you, know, you can have different patterns for the front and back of your, of your uh, bag, and this is going to be the back of our bag. If your pattern has a direction, you're going to want it so that the top of the direction is facing up here. So it's up there, and you're going to be scoring on the side, basically. So on this piece, you're only going to want to score at three inches from the bottom. This is going to allow us to fold our bag flat so that we can store it. I think it's nice to be able to have flat storage bags. Don't know about you, but I like to have bags that if all of a sudden I need to wrap something, I always have tissue paper. It's nice to also have bags. So, remember the two sides where we scored um, in the middle at four inches down to the three inch mark? Well, now is when we're going to do a little bit more scoring. And what we're going to do, I'm going to draw in pencil and then we'll erase it. Here is our one inch score and our seven inch score. And I'm going to erase these in a little bit. And this is our three inch score that goes across the bottom. And then this is that four inch score that only it stops right there. This is going to make it so that we'll be able to fold this bag when we're done. And I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to draw it first and then I'm going to score it. You're going to put your ruler to that center score and you're going to take the bottom, the ruler, and you're going to mark it down. Ooh, I hit a little bump on my ruler. You're going to go down to that mark and you're going to do the same thing on this side from the center. You're going to score down to there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a score tool and our ruler and I'm going to lay it exactly where I made that score line and you're going to score it just like that. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to do it on this one and this time I'm not going to draw it on because you got the gist of it hopefully on the first bag. Here's my center and there's my one inch mark. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to score like that. Boy, this ruler's dirty. I got to fix this ruler because it's got dirt and um, glue all over it. So I keep hitting like uh, speed bumps. 
and again on that side. So now you have, I'm going to do this one over again because it's not the best score in the world. Okay, hopefully you saw all of my scores. Next we're going to fold all of our score lines. So on this piece, oh, I want to tell you one other thing. If you have paper that's foiled like mine is, you sometimes will have it, it will have a tendency to crack. And if you do, this is not my tip. This is the tip from Sam Calcott from Mix Up Craft. If you do, what she recommends, I'm going to fold my scores first. But what she says is if your paper has a tendency to crack, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a little bit of um, scotch tape. She calls it cello. So if you're in Europe, I guess it's called cello. Here we call it scotch tape. And you're going to want to put it on all of the places it could crack. And in my case, the place it mostly will crack is on these um, diagonal lines that we just made. So we're going to want to in my case, I think I'm going to want to put a little bit of tape on here. Now this again is to make it so that this bag will fold when we put it together. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put it flat again. And I'm going to, no one will see this. This is the inside of your bag. And I doubt if anybody will look in the inside of your bag. But if they do and they see some tape, you know, whatever. They shouldn't have been looking in the inside of your bag is what I'm saying. But that, to me, those are the places that I think it'll crack more than any places on that, um, on this little V that I just made. You can see I have a little bit of a crack starting right there. So let me show you on the other one. I'm going to fold the sides in. I'm going to erase all those. Should I just set that there for a second so that you can... Um, keep it on your phone and then um, you can uh, delete it after you've made one. This will show you where those scores look should be. So again, ooh, we're just going to put it to cover our folds. So we don't want them to crack. And that should cover enough of it to make sure it doesn't. Okay, that's all we need to do. And let's get our folds made. Don't forget we have this center fold that you have to make down to that point. And then you want to fold these little triangular. I'm gonna, whoops, I forgot to fold that score line up. And then I have one I need to fold in a little bit okay so those are all of those then we want to we need to fold our hinges uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about my bone folder in the past this is from Fiskars and they stopped making it but I will say this if you've ever bought a, um, a bone folder that is the Teflon ones, if you have any issues with your hands, like I do, those uh, Teflon ones are so hard for me to navigate. I just have to be honest with you. They're slippery. It comes out of my hand. I bought one not very long ago from Amazon, and I sent it back within my 30 days because I couldn't use it. It just wasn't working for me. Now, I'm going to put mine together a little bit differently than the way she put hers together. For some reason, I think this way will be easier. I could be wrong. So I'm going to start with my bottom and my two pieces, my hinges that are going to go inside here and it, uh, they're going to be to hold the sides of our bag, basically. What I did was I put tear tape on both sides and I put, I think my tear tape is like three quarters of an inch and it should be one inch if you're going to do this right. But I'm going to put a little bit of glue to supplement because I want to make sure that I can move this a little bit if I have to. 
The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a teeny tiny little wedge just to make sure, I don't know if you can see how little this wedge is, I just want to make sure that I don't get any of my um, papers caught in my corners. So can you see that little bit I cut off? It's no longer straight, it's now at an angle. And that's, there you can see it better like this. See how this side is, it's more like that? That's because I had it closed when I did that. Okay, I'm gonna take only the backing off of one side of this. And in this case, oh, I already took the backing off. I'm gonna lay it down so that it lines up with this edge. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. But I'm also gonna add a little bit of wet glue on this because I wanna make sure that um, the whole hinge is attached to something. And if I add a little bit of glue to the places where I don't have tear tape, then I'll be absolutely sure that it's gonna, it's gonna stick the whole, the whole place. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the you're gonna put your hinge down so it's laying directly on the edge of your paper and then lay it down. Don't lift it up. It should lift toward me like it is. And I'm just gonna use my bone folder to try and make sure it's still well adhered. And if it needs to be scooched in a little bit, hopefully I can still do that because of the wet glue. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and we're gonna do the other end. Okay, now you're gonna pinch it closed. This is the easiest way to see it. I'm gonna show you another idea when I um, do the rest of the bag. And you're gonna get it right up to the very edge. See? And if the hinge doesn't, if these don't wanna go up all the way, you might just need to snip off you know, just a little bit. I'm gonna snip a little bit off of that bottom piece. Now we've got both of our hinges in. Oh, I need to bone folder that one down. That's the bottom of our bag. Next, we're gonna do the front and the back, and it doesn't matter which side you choose to take the backing off, because remember I put backing, I uh, put um, tear tape, on all of my one inch strips. So I don't know if you can see, it's on that side. I'm gonna put glue. You wanna make sure that you've covered the whole one inch spot with either tear tape, glue, wet glue, or both. And I have a secret of how I wanna make this lay down. So, our goal here is to lay this piece down like that. So what I thought I would do to make this work for me is I thought I would take, I got a little fuzz in there. I thought I would take just a little piece of washi tape and I thought this was a very common term, but apparently it's not. I'm gonna make a donut out of it. You're gonna put the tape backwards on itself and make it into a circle, thereby making it a donut. Now I'm gonna rub it on my clothes a little bit because I don't want it to be super sticky. I just want it to be a little sticky. And I'm gonna put it on my little flap. The only reason I'm doing this is because at this point, this little flap is a little bit tricky to lay in place. So if I can make this work, which it probably won't, but if I can make it work, I'm gonna. At least it lays a little bit. So what I want to do, I knew this was going to be the hardest part for me. What I want to do is I want to lay down this end. And we're going to bone folder it, burnish it, bone folder it. I like the term bone foldering it better myself. And then it will stand up and that is, I'm going to take off my little donut. And then I'm going to do it from the inside. We're going to make sure that's going to stay here because that's what's going to hold your bag together. You're going to have another one of those, but that's what hold it, holds the bag together. Now we're going to do the back of the bag. I'm going to take my backing off. And we've got to put some wet glue. Now, 
this piece, there is a little bit of a direction to it. Remember, this is the bottom of our bag right here. And we made that three inch strip on this bag. This is so it will fold down when you're not using it. So you wanna make sure that that line is close to your bottom, okay? Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, I'm so sorry. Now trying to get this to lay down again. I don't know. You might want to just use wet glue when you're doing this because um, it's a lot easier to navigate wet glue than it is to navigate with tear tape. All right, so now we have the back of our bag, the front of our bag, the bottom of our bag. Our next step is to take off one of our side pieces of tear tape backing. And we gotta have wet glue there too. These pieces, we're only gonna worry about the bottom of it. I did cut these on an angle, the one inch and the seven inch. I did cut those on a little angle so that when we glue it down, those won't get in our way. All we're gonna do now is we're gonna lay our piece directly on top of the piece that we are, um, why can't I think of that word, hinge. I'll probably think of the word hinge about 50 times in the night, but not until then. And I'm gonna do both of my sides this way, and then I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna put the whole bag together because I think I once the once I've got one piece all the way adhered, I'm gonna have trouble getting the um, showing it on camera. Put this in place, making sure that it's lined up with our little hinge that I can never think of the word hinge. Ooh, that's a little bit crooked. And now I got some glue on my finger. That's the beauty of wet glue, is being able to do that. Pick it up and move it. This is again where this gets a little bit complicated. Not hard, but complicated. And again, I'm gonna put wet glue all over that because it'll make it easier for me to mess with it when I have to. I apologize if it's not in frame, but this is the best I probably can do. You're gonna fold that score in you're gonna pull your paper up. And when you pull this up, pull it up tight and line it up with the top of your bag. Can you see that? Right there. But I need to lay it back down because now I wanna put my bone folder inside and really rub that down. I think that's pretty good. And we're gonna do this piece. Again, with our wet glue that I think I must have tossed somewhere because I don't see it. And again, what you're going to do is you're going to pull your paper up so that it's tight at the top or as tight as you can get it to be. This is the time you want to take your glue and wipe it off. If you have glue that's that seeps out or that you accidentally just got on your paper. And we're also going to be putting um, a ribbon on it for a handle. So it's, it's going to be just like those bags that you buy for a dollar or more. And it, the thing that's nicer about it is you're going to be getting rid of papers that you maybe don't like anymore or you don't use anymore and that for you, they're not useful in your craft room, but as a gift bag, they'll be great. So I'm gonna, well, I guess I'll just do it from this angle. The trickiest part, as I said, is working with the size of this bag. It is kind of a biggie. All right, I laid it down so that we can fold it, you know, fold it like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my bone folder and I'm just going to really press my edges in to make sure they're all glued down. And then this is our front of our bag. So this is where we want to do our decorations. 
I'm going to do a video where I show you how to make a tassel and we're going to put tassels on our on our bag but I'm also going to put this on our bag. I'm going to round the corners of it. So now we're going to do our handles. And I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do maybe four inches from either end. And I'm going to hold this in place and then I'm going to put another, I'm going to tell you where, how far down I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to go an inch down. Hopefully, that'll work. So I'm going to make my mark there. Oh, I was going to jab it all the way through with this. And then, same thing on the other end. Would be at 8 inches. And again, we have to go an inch down from the top. I can hardly see it. Okay. Hopefully, our marks are semi in the same spot. And then I'm going to get my Crocodile Big Bite. And if you didn't hear me talk about this, I really, really like it because it stands up and I don't have to um, mess with holding it and, and working the, the tool at the same time. And in this case, I'm going to move my setting at the top to the front. That will make it crunch in, you know, to make the eyelets. That was a technical term, crunch. Okay, good enough. So then I've got holes pun punched through the whole way and my eyelets are all flying around. I've chosen some green eyelets. Okay, I got that one in. I'm gonna put both of these in. When I, I don't know if you can see me do this. I'm gonna put my big bite inside the bag and then you want to line it up with your hole hopefully I can't even see the hole at this juncture so I thought I would show you how to straighten out your ribbon if you have a hair straightener or an easy way to do it would be to spray it and get it wet and then kind of just straighten it. But I'm going to show you how to use the hair straightener. I'm not sure if this ribbon will work with it because I'm afraid it'll catch fire, but you'll be the first to know if it does, right? So you're just going to very quickly do this the whole, everywhere there's a little curl. You want to straighten it out. You just, ooh, got that one at the end. I just can't seem to snap onto. The other way you can do it is just quickly pull it through like that and that will straighten it out. So then I'm going to put my handles on. So what you're going to want to do, hopefully you can see, you're going to start from the inside like that. And, oh, I forgot to cut my ribbon in half. I'm going to cut it so it's, I would say that's about maybe, I don't know, 18 inches. I'll cut it and then we'll, we'll measure it. And it is, wow, it's not even anywhere near 18 inches after I cut it in half. So it is 17 inches. I was close. Hard to believe. If you need to, you can make this into a point, but I'm going to just kind of turn it like that. I, my, my holes are relatively large, so you're going to have to make 
a pretty big knot on the inside if you want it to stay stay attached that looks like it's going to hold <clears throat> then you have to make sure that you're when you lay it in that you're doing this to make sure that it's going to be silver the whole way does that make sense i hope so and then i'll show you my decorations in just a minute i have another video that should already be up where I show you how to make a tassel. I decided I was going to show how to make certain embellishments that you can do yourself. And um, the first one I did was how to make a three-dimensional bow without any real tools. And then I decided to do tassels without any real tools. And hopefully those will be something you'll want to give a try to. And not this one, and hopefully they're close to the same length. So there's our bag. Oh, I gotta turn that over. This is what I was talking about, making sure that your ribbon faces the right way. Like that. So there's our fun little handles. And this is the back, this is the front. So let's decorate our bag and we'll be ready to roll. I think I already said that I'm going to be showing you in another video how to make it, the tassels that I made. And all I did was take one of the pages out of the paper pad. It was a 12 by 12. And it said, here are the pages. I went like this and all I did was cut one of them out and use it. And then I rounded the corners as I showed you earlier and punched a hole in it and threaded my silver ribbon through it. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this piece on and I'm gonna, oh, I wanted to put my tassels through there. I'm gonna hang my tassels on these pieces too. I have one tassel that's super long. Well, super long compared to the rest. And it'll hang it'll hang like that. And the other one, I guess I could put three on there. Maybe one will dangle behind it. And then all I'm going to do is tie this onto our Silver. I couldn't remember the name ribbon. Clearly, that's one of those moments where I can't remember the name of something. You could tie this on with a bow. Um, I'm not sure if this will hold because it's um, more like um, the my um, ribbon is more slippery than regular ribbon so I'm going to try tie it in just a loose knot that way we'll be sure that it can hold everything and then let me turn it straight up and down my tassels are flying into the inside of the bag and I don't want them to do that so here's what I decided to do I'm going to take both I already pushed one of these through I'm going to push this other piece of silver through this eyelet, hopefully. Cross your fingers for me. There you go. And then what I decided I would do is just tie a knot on the inside of my bag. So here, here's the handle. The only way I can do it is show it to you like that. And then here's our tassels. There's another tassel underneath. And that's what it looks like. So I hope that this gave you some ideas of how you could make your own gift bags. It folds down flat so that if you want to store it, 
it's ready to be stored. I hope you enjoyed this and that you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.